ever get stressed just trying to like plan the food for a big party? Uh-huh. Now imagine you have to cater a war zone. Yeah. Halfway across the world. Oh wow. And we aren't talking about just chips and dip, we're talking tanks, helicopters, ammunition. The whole shebang. The works. Yeah. That's the scale we're dealing with when we even say the words US military logistics. And today, we are diving deep into a fascinating part of it all. How it all moves by sea. It's easy to just think about the ships themselves, right? Right. But you can't even imagine how much planning goes into it. Yeah. Take Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Okay. One of the biggest examples of military logistics in history. I've heard it was like mind-blowing even for the time what made it so difficult. Try to picture coordinating half a million troops. Okay. Plus millions of tons of equipment. Wow. To a desert yeah. on the other side of the planet. Oh my God. That was Desert Storm. Wow. That's a wild amount of people and stuff. I can't even imagine how they even started to plan something that big. It really pushed the limits, but it showed us something very important. You have to be flexible. Okay. So back then, that meant relying on civilian contractors. Okay. Like cargo airlines and shipping companies. Makes sense. And the interesting thing is that hasn't changed much. Oh, really? Fast forward to today, and we still rely on them, but it's companies like SpaceX that are supporting these operations. So from cargo planes in the Gulf War to like reusable rockets today. Yeah. Relying on civilian partnerships for logistics has always been super important, even if it's changed over time. Exactly. It shows how adaptable military logistics has to be. It has yeah. to constantly evolve and meet new challenges. Makes sense. And speaking of adapting, yeah. we can't forget the ships. Right. We aren't just talking about any ships. Okay. We're talking specialized ships like Row Rows. Row Rows. What is a Row Row? What makes them so special? Row Row means roll on roll off. Okay. They're basically the giant moving trucks of the sea. Picture this. A giant ramp comes down from the ship and tanks literally drive right onto it. Oh, wow. This design makes loading and unloading so much faster and more efficient than your typical cargo ship. So instead of like lifting each piece of equipment on and off, they just roll off ready to go. Yep. Like a giant floating garage. Exactly. That speed and efficiency are so important in the military where every second counts. For sure. But with cargo that big, it can't be as easy as just driving your car into a ferry, right? You're right. It's not as easy as it sounds. Right. Loading these ships takes a ton of planning. Yeah. They have to factor in things like weight distribution so the ship doesn't tip. Right. The order They load the vehicles. Okay. International safety regulations. All right. Even the smallest miscalculation while they're at sea could be a disaster. It's like a giant game of Tetris, but with tanks and helicopters. That's a great way to put it. Oh. And the planning doesn't stop once they get where they're going. Trucks, trains, they all become crucial links in the chain, making sure all that equipment gets where it's going. Especially those massive pieces of equipment. Right. Yeah. It takes a whole network of ships, trains, and trucks to keep the U.S. military moving. It reminds me of that saying, like, it takes a village. But in this case, it's a global village. Very true. But all this logistical power isn't just for military operations. Oh, right. Would you believe that these ships and their crews play a huge role in humanitarian aid and disaster relief as well? It's easy to forget that all of this expertise can be used to help people too. Exactly. Yeah. Think back to that horrible earthquake in Haiti in 2010. Right. The US military, especially the military sea lift command, was critical in getting aid to the island quickly. Right. Those ships were lifelines delivering necessary supplies and crucial support after that disaster. It showed just how versatile and wide reaching these networks really are. Speaking of reaching around the world, mm -hmm. I've always been really interested in maritime prepositioning. It sounds like something from a strategy game. It kind of is, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine a fully stocked warehouse that's on a ship. Okay. Ready to go anywhere in the world on a moment's notice. That's maritime prepositioning. So it's like having a floating arsenal strategically placed all over the globe. Yeah. That's incredible. That would give you such an advantage in a fast moving situation. Yeah. How does that actually play out? The U.S. places these ships, fully loaded, in key places all over the globe. Yeah. It's all about predicting what will be needed and avoiding any holdups that can happen during a crisis, uh -huh. let's say. Let's say there's a huge natural disaster. Okay. Or a conflict breaks out somewhere without a lot of infrastructure. Right. Getting supplies there quickly is super important. Right. That's when maritime prepositioning is a game changer. Okay. 
these ships that are already packed and in place yeah. can get there so much faster than if you had to move everything from scratch. It's like having a fully stocked emergency kit, but for the whole world. You mentioned places with bad infrastructure. Right. Which makes me think of something. Once the ships get there, mm -hmm. how do they actually get all of that equipment where it needs to go? Right. Especially if the roads and railways are destroyed or don't even exist. That's when things get really tricky. It mm -hmm. often takes ingenuity, mm -hmm. adaptability, okay. and a whole lot of collaboration. Right. We're talking about maybe using helicopters to bring supplies in, okay. building temporary landing strips, wow. even using pack animals or people to carry things in extreme cases. It sounds like every situation is different. It really is. And they have to figure out how to adapt to what's happening on the ground. Exactly. And that's why the human element is so important. Right. We talk about ships and technology, right. but none of it works without skilled people. That's true. Both military and civilian, yeah. making sure these operations actually happen. They're the ones who have to think fast, solve really hard problems in the moment, yeah. and get the right things to the right place at the right time. Wow. Often in very difficult situations. It's easy to forget about the people when you're thinking about how massive this all is. It really is. Speaking of all those people, what about technology? Yeah. What's changing for them? Well, yeah. technology is making everything faster and more efficient. Okay. And it's making everything more responsive too. How so? We're talking about things like really advanced software okay. that can track where supplies are in real time. Wow. It can even predict problems and find the very best shipping routes. So it's like having a live view of all your resources all over the world. Yes. That's amazing. And that lets you make better decisions. Right. And it's more than just tracking. Okay. Imagine drones flying in crucial supplies uh, right to the front lines. Wow. Completely avoiding dangerous roads. Oh, wow. Or places where there's fighting. Right. Or autonomous vehicles transporting equipment. Oh, wow. Without needing a driver. Right. Which makes it safer for everyone and more efficient. It sounds like something from a sci-fi movie. I know, right? But it's real. Uh -huh. What are some of the challenges with making all of that happen on a large scale? One of the biggest challenges is making sure this technology works in the real world. Okay. The military doesn't exactly operate in a safe office environment. Sure. A drone delivery system might work great in a test lab. Yeah. But what happens when you get it out in a sandstorm or a jungle? Right. It's got to work everywhere. Exactly. Are there any other issues? Cybersecurity is a big one. Right. As we get more and more reliant on computers and data sharing. Yeah these systems become vulnerable to hacking. Right. Protecting these systems and the information they use is extremely important. It's true. Imagine if someone could mess with supply lines during a major operation. Yeah, or like change information. Exactly. It would be chaos. Total chaos. It just goes to show, even with all of this new technology, we're only as strong as the weakest link. Exactly. And when we're talking about keeping the military supplied, the stakes are incredibly high. Right. And it's not just about technology either. Okay. We need to think about the ethics of all this too. Okay, how so? Especially when we're talking about things like autonomous systems. Right. And artificial intelligence. Right. It's one thing to have a computer plan the best route. Uh-huh. It's a totally different thing to have a computer deciding who lives or dies on a battlefield. Exactly. As technology gets more and more advanced, yeah. we need to be having serious conversations about how to use it ethically in the military. It's about using these powerful new tools the right way. Exactly. It's a tough issue for sure. It is. But it's one that's going to change how we fight wars and help people in the future. Absolutely. Speaking of the future, I want to talk about some times when U.S. military logistics was really put to the test recently. Are there any examples that come to mind that show how this is all changing? Definitely. One is the Ebola outbreak in West Africa back in 2014. Oh. It presented a really unique set of challenges. Okay. That was a major test for global health security. It was a scary time. Yeah. What did the military do to help stop Ebola? Well, this wasn't about tanks and troops. Right. It was about getting medical personnel on the ground fast. Right. Setting up treatment centers. Okay. And getting critical supplies to an area dealing with a deadly and highly contagious disease. It was a totally different kind of challenge. It really was. Speed and efficiency were still super important. Right. But they also needed very specialized equipment. Okay. Protective gear. Right. And medical experts. Of course. It was a huge logistical task. Yeah. It took cooperation between 
governments, international organizations, yeah. and of course the U.S. military, right. who were vital in providing logistical support and expertise. So instead of just trying to win a battle, this was about stopping a global health crisis. Exactly. The Ebola outbreak showed that global threats are changing. Right. And the military has to adapt to face them. Makes sense. It's not just about fighting wars anymore. Right. It's about being ready to handle all kinds of problems. Right. Natural disasters. Ugh. Pandemics. Right. Humanitarian crises. Okay. And new threats that we haven't even imagined yet. And that takes a different way of thinking than we're used to from the military, right? For sure. It takes adaptability, yeah. ingenuity, right. and global cooperation. Sounds like it. And speaking of adapting, one area where the U.S. military has really had to be flexible is responding to the changing geopolitical landscape. Okay. It really does seem like adaptability is key for all of this. Yeah. What is it about all of these geopolitical changes that's making the military be so adaptable? Well, we spent decades focused on projecting force in places that were relatively stable. Right. Like, think about deployments like Desert Storm. Okay. Where we had bases already set up. Right. And pretty safe ways to get supplies where they needed to go. Right. But things are changing. Yeah. We have new competitors. Okay. Powerful ones. Okay. And that changes everything. So instead of focusing on just one enemy or one part of the world, the U.S. has to be ready to go anywhere. Exactly. We have to be ready for anything. Right. We're talking about areas with almost no infrastructure. Right. Places where the airspace is contested. Right. And where things could escalate really quickly. Right. In those situations, the old way of doing things, setting up these big bases and having these predictable supply lines, that's just too risky. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. We like, what would even happen if an adversary knew where all of our stuff was going all the time? Right. That's why the military has been changing things up. Okay. How so? We're moving towards a more distributed way to handle logistics. Okay. Smaller units that can move quickly. That can be deployed to different spots with little notice. Wow. And we're depending on things like drones and autonomous vehicles more and more. Right. To move those supplies through dangerous areas. It's like they're playing chess with logistics. Exactly. They have to stay one step ahead. Right. It's about being flexible and using every tool we have to make sure that the U.S. military can get the job done. Even when things are really tough. Especially when things are tough. And that brings us back to the people. Right. The ones making all of this happen. The logisticians. Yes. Both military and civilian. It's easy to forget about them. It really is. They're the ones working behind the scenes, making sure everything runs smoothly. It's easy to get caught up in all of the technology, yeah. but it really comes down to people, doesn't it? Absolutely. They're the ones solving the problems. Yeah. They're managing these huge, complex networks. It's amazing. I know, right? And they're the ones making sure all the right resources get to the right place when they need to be there. Or not or what? They keep those supply lines open, no matter what's going on. Exactly. It's really incredible. I mean, it's because they're so good that the U.S. military can even think about doing any of this. You know? I know, it's amazing. It takes so much skill, dedication, and planning. It really does sound like the future of all of this is going to be about combining human ingenuity, new technologies, and strategic thinking all at the same time. It absolutely is. It's a field that's always changing. Right. There are always new challenges. Right. New technologies. Makes sense. And an absolute dedication to making sure that the U.S. is always ready for whatever's next. That is a perfect place to end it. That wraps up our deep dive into the wild world of U.S. military logistics. It's an important one. It is. From the huge ships and high-tech drones to the amazing people making it all happen, it's incredible what we can do. It is. And it just goes to show how important it is to keep all of those supply lines running smoothly no matter what.